Hey everybody, this is Joel from movingtomexi.co. Bienvenidos a nuestro canal. Estoy aquí con mi hija Adelaide. And today, hoy, is the first day where we're going to be putting on a video, a show, where you're going to have the opportunity to learn more Spanish. As you've seen in all of our videos, I really like to use Spanish words. I like to explain the words so that every one of our videos becomes a teaching opportunity for the Spanish language. Um, I've been speaking Spanish now for over 30 years. Don't want to date myself, but yeah, I am getting up there in age. And you know, one thing I want to say uh, in the method that we're going to teach is, you know, you just got to be tranquilo. You need to re relajarte, which is relax yourself because you can't be, you don't have to worry. No te preocupes, which is do not worry. You just gotta chill out, let the words kind of be absorbed into your mind. We're gonna really start slow with pretty well vocabulary, vocabulario that you already know. There, are, if you could believe it, over 2,000 words in the English language that are pretty well the same in Spanish. And we're gonna start with a lot of those because that's gonna formulate the way you're going to learn the Spanish language with us over time. and. By the time we're done this, after about 10 or 12 hours worth of uh, video and lessons, you're gonna be able to comfortably speak Spanish in a situation like we're in today as I'm hanging out here with Adelaide, just having a regular conversation. And again, you just gotta be tranquilo. You don't have to worry, no te preocupes. If you make a mistake, and I still make mistakes 30 years later, I don't care. And honestly, anyone here that you're gonna meet, any Mexican, national that speaks Spanish, any non-Mexican um, expat that speaks fluent Spanish, they're not going to care if you make a mistake. As a matter of fact, they're going to be excited to help you learn the Spanish language. So we're going to comenzar. Comenzar, where do you think that comes from? What, what word, Addy? To start. Yeah, we're going to start, but what word does it sound like in English? Comenzar. Com <laughs> Commence. It means to commence. So we're gonna comenzar to transformar to vocabulario. Okay, so we are starting, which is commencing, to transformar, which is to transform, and your vocabulario, what is that? Vocabulary. Vocabulary. There you go. So you've got three words off the bat. So how limited is your vocabulary? So if you were to think about you as an English speaker, how many words do you actually use on a daily basis, a weekly basis, on a monthly basis? Like any guesses? Do you have any guesses? Like how many words do you actually use regularly of the English language? Like 5,000. 5,000? Well, you know, I, I think you'd have to be like an astrophysicist to be using 5,000 words of the English language. No, studies have been done that we use between 500 and 1,500 words. That is it. So in all of our daily communications, if you read the New York Times, if you read the Calgary Herald, for all my friends back in Calgary, they've actually done studies where the maximum number of words in a newspaper is around six to 700. So if you really break it down in that way, and this manera, what is manera? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, I want you to think about it because we're here to, you don't have to remember, but what does manera sound like in English? <laughs> it's okay, you can take your time and think about it. Manera. 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 Man. You either have good something or bad something, good manners or bad manners. Oh, so it, manera. so manera is in this manner, okay? Mm -hmm. So you do something in this manner, in this way. So manner and way are basically the same words, and la manera is the way in Spanish. So we're gonna transform your vocabulario, vocabulario, see, and I do make mistakes, and I do have sometimes trouble pronouncing certain words, especially if they're similar to English. Those are the ones that I have the trouble with the most, which makes absolutely no sense. But your vocabulario inglés, which is, English into Espanol, which is Spanish. So we're going to start very slow here. There's 
English words that end in A-B-L-E and English words that end in I-B-L-E. So there, there's able and there's evil, right? Possible, right, is one of them. And probable would be another. So possible is an I-B-L-E word and probable is an A-B-L-E word. Now let's transform those into Spanish, Addy. So possible would become Possible. Possible. And probable would become um, probi probable. No, no, no. Let's think it out. Probable. Probable. No. Probable. That's okay. Think it out. So you think about, you're just pronouncing, it's the English possible. word. No, so possible you did that. Oh, yeah. Probable would be probable. Oh, so basically it's the same word. So something is possible, it's possible. Something is probable, it's probable, okay? The other thing, and you just heard me say it is, would be S. So something is possible, Addy, something is possible. So it is possible. Es possible. Es posible. It is probable. Es probable. Es probable, excelente. So now can you repeat? It is possible. It is probable. Excelente. So what is excelente mean? Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. So you just learned all these English words that you already have in your brain are actually Spanish words. And if you see me looking down, I do have some notes so that I can kind of keep on track because I do have um, I do have the ability to go off track and on tangents, don't I, Addy? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Quite often. So, let's go to some other words. So, tell me, it is terrible. Es terrible. Es terrible. It is acceptable. Es acceptable. Okay, that is what you would think it is, but in Spanish there are a few words that do change. So, acceptable is not acceptable, it's aceptable. So, acceptable in English has two C's. Mm -hmm. But aceptable in Espanol has only one C. But if you said to someone, it's acceptable, they're going to know what you're talking about. So don't worry about making that mistake. Don't even try to remember it. What you want to do is just think it through. Aceptable. So it is acceptable? Es aceptable. Excelente. So the word for me is... Me. <laughs> so that's, that's, a, that's a, so me for me, para mí is for for me. So another Spanish word which is going to be very very important in your vocabulary is para, and para means for. Um, so how would we say para mí? No, how would we say for me? Para mí. Para mí, excelente. And the next thing in Spanish is you. Now there's formal and informal. We're gonna just start on the formal side of things for these lessons. Um, so formal for you is usted. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how would I say for you? Para usted. Para usted. Excelente, Adeline. How would I say it is for me? Es para mí. Excelente. Now, the word not is <laughs> is no. There's another easy one for you. Okay, so it is not for me. No es para mí. No es para mí. It is not possible. No es posible. No es posible. And this is for the audience. Let, let them answer this one, okay? It is not for you. Try. Do you remember? No es para usted. usted. And the other thing in Spanish is you could say to someone, si, sí, es posible. What does that mean? I'm saying, yes, it is possible. possible. Or you could say, no, no es posible. It's not possible. Okay, I'm using some inflection. Or I could say, es posible. You're asking a question. Asking a question. So, I'm saying to you, is it possible? But I'm just saying, is possible. 
I could say either it is possible, si, es posible, or es posible. <laughs> so inflection is super important in, um, in Spanish and we use inflection quite a bit. Uh, but also asking a question, one of the most famous words in Spanish is why. And many people know it, but what is why? Por qué. Por qué. So how would I say, why is it possible? Por qué es posible. Okay. Why is it not impossible? Por qué no es posible. Excelente. Why is it, and this is for the audience, why is it excellent? Porque es excelente. 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 Another word that is uh, super important in Spanish, and in our videos, I'm going to use this this one quite a bit, and that is a C. And a C is essentially like this. Okay. So, for example, es posible a C? Is it possible? Like this, no es posible así, it's not possible like this, it's excelente así, it's excellent like this or like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if like you were ordering something and the waiter said, no, it would be like excellent, that would be excellent like this, it's excelente como así. You could add the como, which is like, like, which, like that, but we're gonna get into that in another lesson. And tell me, Addy, why is it not acceptable that way? How would you say that? Porque no es acceptable uh, así. <laughs> you got 99% of it right. The only word is, let's, oh. let's think about that one. Aceptable. No, aceptable. And this is how you're going to remember it. It's not acceptable to say aceptable. It's acceptable to say aceptable. So that's how we're going to remember that one, okay? It's aceptable así. Now, getting to feelings and how do you say I'm sorry? Lo siento. Lo siento. And where does the word siento come from? It comes from the English word. And this is a kind of a difficult one, but if you were to think about it, you might be able to get it. Any guesses out there? Any guesses where the, the siento, which English word it comes from? or which English word actually comes from originally Latin words that became that word in English, it's sentiment. So sentiment is the English version of siento. So if Addy was to say lo siento, literally she's saying, I feel it. It, I feel, but in a way that's expressed in Spanish, it means I'm sorry. And the word for I in Spanish, Addy, is yo. yo. Now, would you say yo siento? Mm, no. No. And why is that? Because it's like more like I, like I really, really feel. Yeah, you, you, you could say it in a way we were really trying to express mm -hmm. it. But the reason being is with the verb, anytime there's the O on the verb, that's already saying that that is your verb. Mm -hmm. So siento is I. So I could say, I don't have to say, I feel, I just say, feel. But because in Spanish, you conjugate the verbs and the O is on the verb, that already indicates that I'm talking about myself. So it would just be siento, lo siento, which means literally, I feel sorry. Another word is but, not like my but, but, but. How would we say but? Pero. Pero. I'm sorry, but it is not possible. Lo siento. Uh, <laughs> no, just, that's okay. Lo siento, uh, pero no es posible. Okay. So I see you closing your eyes. Are you trying to remember? <laughs> or are you trying to think? I'm trying to think. You're trying to think. That's good. Because don't try to remember. We're going to give you some links at the end of this course. Um, where I have learned actually several different languages using this method, and it's the Michelle Thomas method. That's the method that we're teaching today. But what Michelle Thomas always says is, I don't want you to think about it, <laughs> right? I don't want you to remember it, sorry. I don't want you to try to remember. I want you to try to think. 
because that's what our minds do. Okay, so the other words that you know, and there are, and did I, did I ask people how many words that we actually know already? It's, a, it's like over 2,000. So I think I already said that at the beginning of the video, but keep remembering that, um, keep thinking actually, I should be saying, keep thinking about that, is that you already have 2,000 words of English in your brain that can easily be transformar, like transformado, mm -hmm. podemos transformarlos a español, okay? The other ones are ENT and ANT. So the only difference is for an ENT word, so excellent in English becomes excelente. Important in English becomes Importante. And here's the other thing. Did you notice how where Addy put the accent on the word? Where did you put the accent on the word? On the A. Yes, you did. But it's so the the reason oh. <laughs> we have a cat trying to jump through a window and I closed the window. Yeah, please open the window. And he just like it was like a bird flying into a window. That's pretty funny. So on the penultimate the penultimate Syllable is where you always stress and in Spanish you do not stress on diff like more than one syllable and on anything that ends in a vowel vowel it's always the penultimate syllable so in this case importante is importante imposible is imposible it's not imposible it's not imposible it's imposible mm -hmm. see mm -hmm. excelente so what about the word different would become? Diferente. Diferente. And it is important to me. Es importante para mí. Es importante para mí. It is important like that. Es importante así. Okay. It is different. Es diferente. It is different like that. Es diferente así. Excelente. The next word we're going to discuss today is the word good, which, hey, we got Jillian walking by. Jillian, what is the word for good? Bueno. Bueno. And what's the word for really good? Muy bueno. <laughs> Muy bueno. Okay, excelente. So we have the word good, which is bueno, and we have the word very, which is muy. So something that is very good would be? Muy bueno. Muy bueno. And that's in masculine. Now, if something was very good in a feminine would be? Muy buena. Excelente, Adelaide. So, it is not very good. No es muy bueno. And it is very good. Es muy bueno. It is very important to me. Es muy importante para mí. Excelente. So again, just about the stresses and what I can decir and what I can tell you is that when you have a word, again, that ends in a vowel, the stress is always on the penultimate syllable, and that's muy importante. Muy importante. What would be restaurant? Restaurante. Restaurante. Excelente. Now, another word in Spanish which is super important is the word to have, which is tener is the verb, but I have is? Tengo. Tengo. So think of tango, like the dance. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's it. You actually don't tango like that, do you? I don't even know how to tango. <laughs> but if you think of the word tango, you can remember the word tengo. And tengo is I have. Mm -hmm. So would you say yo tengo? You Normally, have. you don't have to. You don't have to. You could. Now you could say, I'm hungry. Tengo Do you have to say oh, you? Tengo hambre. Tengo hambre. But if you're like, I'm hungry. You say yo. Yo. Tengo hambre. Okay? So literally, and we've done this in one of the videos, hambre is the word hunger. And you don't say, I am. You don't, you don't say, I am hungry in Spanish. You say, I have hungry. hunger. So, tengo hambre. So, what is, and we see if you can think about this one, what is, I have it? Uh, lo tengo. Oh, lo tengo. Lo tengo. So, the word for it is lo. 
and you don't have to say yo lo tengo, you could if you were really, really trying to stress it. Like someone's like, do you have that damn thing? You could say, yo lo tengo, I have it. But normally you just say, no, lo tengo, no te preocupes, lo tengo. See? Excelente. How would you say, I need it? Let's think about oh, it. Lo necesito. lo necesito. How would you say, I don't need it? No lo necesito. No lo necesito. How about, we're going to add something to this, I don't need it now. Let's teach everyone the word now. Oh, uh, what was it? I don't the word now. I know, but I don't need it now? Yeah. Oh, uh, no lo necesito ahora. No lo necesito ahora. The word for now is ahora. Interesting because the word ora is the word hour. Okay, so you could say to someone, what time is it? Uh, que hora es. Que hora es. What time is it? So what hour is it? Literally translated. But right now means ahora, which literally translated means to the hour. Okay? And this is one I also, everyone knows this word, but adios. We're, we're not going to go away now. We're, we're, still staying. we're still stuck in this class. Actually, let's leave that to the end. So when we end this video, can you remind me to explain everyone the, how adios became as a word? Okay? Yeah. So, um, I don't need it. Um, I just want to see if you remember that no, one. No, no, no. No lo necesito. Okay? We have cats in the house and they are running, <laughs> they're, they're running wild, right? And a matter of fact, I've scrolled to the end of, did you know that we were at the end of the lesson? No. Okay. So I think we're going to cut it off there, everyone. This was a, I think this was a great start. <clears throat> this is Addie and my first time uh, doing this uh, little video together. Um, it's going to, again, be, you know, Spanish for, for foreigners. We're going to be doing it in the house. We're also going to be doing it at little cafes. Um, as we kind of grow uh, the shows around the language courses, you know, maybe we're going to meet with some different people. We'll do some small interviews, not fully in Spanish, but as you progress, we'll start using more Spanish in the conversations with some of the people in the different little cafes, or maybe we go for a beer, and uh, we could show a little bit more how you can learn uh, how to interact in the Spanish language. So on that note, oh, if you like learning Spanish, what should they do? Oh, give this video a thumbs up. <laughs> a thumbs up. And what else should they do? Uh, turn on the notification bell. And? And subscribe. <laughs> subs subscribe. Oh, subscribir? Subscribir. Subscribir? Sub subscribir. <laughs> oh my God, that's a hard one. Okay. Subscribe. So we are going to say adios, but before we say adios, does anyone know what adios really means if you were to break it down? Yes, it means goodbye. To God. You, to God. Okay. So what people used to do back in the day, it was like two words, right? It was a to Dios. And it was almost like, may God be with you. To God, you will go, right? Like, to God will go with you. Like, that's how people spoke back in the day. And as language evolved, like language has evolved over thousands of years and still continues to evolve, it got shortened into one word, which just became adios. adios. <laughs> really? But really, it was to God. And uh, if you actually look at other languages and a lot of their words goodbye, and even in the English uh, word goodbye, do a Google on the origin of that and you'll see that it also was related to God and it just became, it was the way people spoke in those days. So on that note, nos vemos, hasta luego, luego which means later, hasta pronto, which means soon we will see you. And let's say this together. One, two, three, adios. Uno, dos, tres, adios! Ha <laughs> ha